The year is 2025, the world feels different. A chill wind blows through global tech. The United States made a move, a big one, advanced chips to China, no more. The ban was sudden, shockwaves followed. This was not just trade, this was strategy. A line drawn in the silicon sand. Washington's reasoning was clear, national security. Fears of China's tech dominance grew. Advanced chips power everything, AI, supercomputers, military applications loomed large, the Commerce Department acted decisively, export controls tightened, the aim slow China's ascent, preserve an edge, the global supply chain shuttered, for decades components flowed freely, east to west. Now a chasm was opening, companies scrambled, uncertainty reigned supreme, was this the end of an era, the era of open tech exchange? Many whispered yes. The world was rewiring itself, fast. This was more than a ban, it was a signal, a tech cold war had truly begun. Huawei was in the crosshairs. The Chinese tech giant felt the pressure, immense. Its global ambitions faced a wall, a US wall. Access to cutting edge chips was severed, for its smartphones, for its 5G networks. Some predicted Huawei's slow fade, they underestimated the company, they underestimated China. A new resolve was forged in this fire. Then came Kunpeng, the Kunpeng 920, a chip born of necessity a symbol of defiance, designed by Huawei's his silicon, for servers, for data centers, for cloud computing. It was an ARM-based processor, powerful, ambitious, not yet the world's best, but it was theirs, a crucial step towards independence, towards autonomy. The message, we will build our own. Kunpeng was not just a piece of hardware, it was the heart of a new strategy. Huawei began building an ecosystem around it, Open Euler, an open source operating system, Open Gauss, a database, all for Kunping, they wooed developers, they offered incentives, the goal, a self-sufficient stack from chip to cloud, a world where US tech was not essential. This was Huawei's quiet rebellion, its secret weapon. The chip was one battlefront, software was another. Huawei knew this, deeply. Android, Google's mobile OS, was a lifeline, but that lifeline became a vulnerability. What if access was restricted further, the fear was real, the risk, palpable. So Huawei accelerated its own operating system, Harmony OS. The name itself spoke volumes. Harmony OS was not just a phone OS, it was designed for a connected world. Smartphones, yes, but also tablets, wearables, smart TVs, even cars. One OS for all, a seamless AI experience, that was the vision. A bold attempt to break the Android iOS duopoly. A digital silk road built by Huawei, independent, interconnected, Chinese-led. The rollout was strategic, phased, first in China building a user base, refining the experience, fixing the bugs, then cautiously looking outwards to global markets the challenge app developers, convincing them. An OS without apps is a beautiful empty shell. Huawei invested heavily. Huawei's struggle was a symptom, a catalyst. China saw the bigger picture, the strategic threat. Tech self-sufficiency became a national priority, not just for Huawei, for the entire nation, a new long march, this time in semiconductors. The government acted, with speed, with scale, money flowed, vast sums of it, a plan was set, ambitious, undeniable. Beijing announced a staggering figure, over $150 billion, earmarked for the chip industry. This was not just investment, it was a moonshot. Funding for research, for development, for fabs, tax breaks, subsidies, incentives for talent, the goal to build a domestic chip industry, from design to manufacturing to packaging, closing the gap with the West, and fast. This was state capitalism in high gear. A fusion of government direction and market forces, universities were mobilized, research institutes too, new companies sprouted, existing ones scaled up, the focus was broad, memory chips, logic chips, specialty semiconductors, the whole spectrum. SMIC's gambit, the dawn of China's chip sovereignty. Amidst this national drive, a name emerged, SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, China's biggest chip foundry, its best hope. For years, SMIC trailed behind the leaders. TSMC in Taiwan, Samsung in South Korea, they made advanced chips, SMIC made older ones. The US sanctions hit SMIC too, hard, access to advanced equipment was restricted. But then came the whispers, the rumors, late 2024, early 2025, something shifted. SMIC had achieved a breakthrough, a significant one. Reports surfaced, they were producing 7 nanometer chips, perhaps even testing 5 nanometer processes, this was a leap. A stunning development, how? Without the latest EUV lithography machines? The details were murky, the implications clear. If true, this changed the game, radically. It meant China could produce relatively advanced chips, not the absolute cutting edge, not yet, but good enough for many applications.
Silicon Tremors How Intel, AMD, and Apple Face the Eastern Gale The ripples reached Silicon Valley and beyond, U.S. tech giants watched, with growing unease, Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Apple. For years China was a massive market, and a key part of their supply chains. Now it was becoming a formidable competitor, a rival fueled by its own government, and spurred by U.S. restrictions. Intel and AMD faced a new reality. Their dominance in CPUs was challenged, not just by ARM, but by Chinese designs like Kunpeng, and, potentially by chips made in China, by SMIC, the server market, the PC market, all vulnerable. If China built its own ecosystem it would buy less, less from Intel, less from AMD. Market share was at stake, billions in revenue, Apple too felt the tremors, deeply. China was its second biggest market, a manufacturing hub. What if Harmony OS truly took off? The New Tech Cartography Geopolitics Remapped by Microchips This is not just about companies or profits, this is about power, global power. Microchips are the new oil, the new steel, the foundational layer of the 21st century. He who controls the chips controls the future, or at least has a very strong say in it. The US-China tech war is remapping geopolitics, creating new alliances, new fault lines. The world is splitting into tech blocks, one centered around the United States, its allies, Japan, Netherlands, South Korea, Taiwan precariously, sharing technology, coordinating export controls, trying to maintain a lead, a democratic tech sphere. The other block, centered around China, Russia, and others drawn to its orbit, building their own standards, their own supply chains. This bifurcation has costs, huge costs. Innovation slows when collaboration fragments, redundancy increases, inefficiencies multiply. The dream of a truly global flat tech world? Fading. Instead we see digital walls rising. Higher, countries are forced to choose sides, or try to balance. Beyond 2025, navigating the fractured future of global tech. So, where does this leave us? Today in May 2025, the tech landscape is fractured, more competitive, more nationalistic than it has been in decades. China's bold moves are reshaping the industry. Huawei's resilience, SMIC's breakthroughs, the massive state investment, all are factors, they are not leading the world, not yet, but they are closing the gap. Faster than expected, the United States faces hard choices, does it double down on restrictions or seek areas of cooperation, where possible? Can it out-innovate a determined state-backed rival? Its own tech champions are worried, they need global markets, they thrive on open innovation, a purely defensive crouch might not be sustainable. The spirit of Silicon Valley is about building, connecting. The rest of the world watches and adapts. Europe seeks strategic autonomy in tech. India charts its own course, so do others. No one wants to be a pawn in this great game. The rise of multiple tech poles seems likely. A multipolar tech world, more complex, more dynamic, perhaps more resilient in some ways, more vulnerable in others. The era of undisputed American tech dominance is over. The future of tech will be defined by this rivalry, but also by the human ingenuity it unleashes. Competition can spur innovation on all sides. The challenge is to manage this competition wisely.